This is DK Dynamite, and today what I have for you guys is my official review of the variety map pack within Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, I didn't make a video when this map pack was announced around a month ago. I was very busy at that time, but I was super hyped to hear that Raven Software and Activision both listened to us when we said we wanted the original and only map pack from COD 4 back in 2009 remastered in 2017 for Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, in terms of the multiplayer maps featured in the Variety DLC, we first up have Broadcast. Based on the TV station from the campaign mission Charlie Don't Surf, this map provides a unique blend of confined corridors and wide open spaces. Outside the station, the parking lot contains long sight lines, but once inside, cramped hallways and a computer cluttered broadcast room provide ample close range combat opportunities. Now, this is definitely my favorite multiplayer map out of the Variety DLC. It plays very well with the game, and I don't remember playing this too much back when COD 4 was out in 2009. I remember purchasing this map pack on the Xbox 360, but I don't have too many memories of it. I do. I remember enjoying a map like this that was taken directly from the campaign. So I do remember dropping some pretty good gameplays back then. But as we look at the gameplay in the background, I did pretty well when I first played this multiplayer map. So I downloaded the map pack right when it came out. I of course opened up the free supply drops that came with the map pack and I was able to unlock weapons like the ACR and the new shotgun as well which are very interesting i've talked about the salvage system in this game many times before and i think it's a very nice improvement over the supply drop system we had within black ops 3. we don't only have to rely on earning weapons from supply drops but we can also earn salvage through burning duplicates which allows us to craft our weapons piece by piece so next up we have chinatown set in a foggy downtown district this nighttime map is lit up by the flickery neon signs and a full moon. A reimagining of the original Call of Duty multiplayer map, Carentan, players will need to be careful on these streets as almost every building in the map can be occupied, providing perfect cover for enemies waiting for a chance to line you up in their sights. So this just happens to be my second most favorite multiplayer map out of this DLC. It's pretty chaotic at times, but game modes like Search and Destroy and Domination play very, very well on this map. Now, as it says, it's a reimagining of an original multiplayer map from Call of Duty, which means Call of Duty 1. So I was too young to remember playing that map, but if I look up images of the map, I could remember bits and pieces of it. That map was probably taken directly out of the original Call of Duty campaign as well. But the fact that this is a reimagining of that map just confirms and goes to say that yes developers pay attention to nostalgic moments within the Call of Duty series and try their best to reimagine some of these fan favorite maps for upcoming releases or their current Call of Duty game. So yes I've got some pretty good gameplay on this map as well which I've included within this video. I've essentially put together all of my best clips and kills from the variety map pack here within this single gameplay as you can see. Now next up we have Creek. Set in a wide open village ravaged by combat where concealment is the difference between life and death, a gaping ravine divides this map into two. Open clearings with sheer cliff faces and ample forest cover make this map ideal for snipers and long range firefights. Now to be honest with you, this is probably my least favorite map out of this DLC. Not because I'm bad at sniping, but it's because I don't snipe too often and I'm all about that crazy action packed gameplay. Now when you hop into a match, here on Creek, the gameplay is going to be extremely slow, whether it's free for all, team deathmatch, domination, or even search and destroy. There's a lot of sniping, of course, but honestly, this map feels a lot like the map Estate from Modern Warfare 2, along with a little bit of Whiteout from Call of Duty Ghost. So, who knows, maybe those two maps were influenced by this map, Creek, here within 
Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. Again, the map is beautiful, is fairly large, and is great for anybody who loves sniping or a lot of slow-paced gameplay, getting in some nice headshots or long shots for any of the challenges they may be completing. Now, there was a huge complaint going on within the community back when the variety map pack was announced in regards to paying full price, aka $15, for this map pack. So, some people believe that paying $15 for a map pack is far too much unless it includes zombies. It should not be that price when it only includes multiplayer content. But when you think about it, as Activision and Raven have confirmed themselves, this map pack comes along with 10 rare supply drops, regardless if you pre-order the map pack or if you buy it right now. So that is, I believe it's, was it five or $10 worth of value with supply drops? So that's where the extra $5 comes in. This map pack should have been $10 on its own. Maybe you can say $2 per multiplayer map. And then they added on the extra amount of money with the supply drops that it features as well. So if you do the math, it makes sense. But when you look at people who are either fanboys of zombies or only play zombies, then they would not understand or even begin to think about why this map pack costs $15. Now, all I'm going to say about this is this is Activision. What do we expect? Maybe the minimum that they can charge for a map pack, according to whoever they talk to, whoever is in charge of them and their investment firm, says that map packs have to be $15. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's the minimum. So in doing so, since this map pack doesn't feature any zombies content, they have to add on an extra 5 to $6 somehow. So... They accommodated that with 10 rare supply drops, which to me is fine. These 10 rare supply drops gave me so much fucking salvage, as I said, that I was able to craft the weapons that I wanted. So to me, it's worth it. I probably would have spent a couple of dollars on these supply drops anyway, just to get some salvage. Because I think it's a great system. Have I spent a dollar in Infinite Warfare? Absolutely not. Do I even play Infinite Warfare? Definitely not. But Modern Warfare Remastered is a different game to me. Not only is it a remaster of one of my favorite Call of Duties, but... They introduce a system where, in a way, we're still getting fucked because it's Activision, of course, but there is a way to craft the weapons we want. So that's where supply drops come in. They're never going to go away, but all they could do, all the development teams could do together, is think of a nice and fair system which allows us to get the weapons we want either through completing challenges or by earning this salvage from burning duplicates. Instead of the very, very direct method we earn weapons in, for Black Ops 3. Next up we have Kill House. So a small training warehouse filled with various building mock-ups that feature soft and hard cover points. Expect fast paced and fierce firefights for maximum close quarters chaos. So again, this is essentially a DLC expansion for shipment. This is another one of those extremely chaotic maps where grenades are flying everywhere, you're dying left and right, spawning inside firefights, spawning within explosions, and all of that good shit. Now, I would say this is probably number three out of my favorite maps here within the variety map pack. I've gotten some great kills on this map and had a great time using the ACR on it as well, but the crazy chaotic gameplay gets fairly annoying at times when you're on a nice streak and all of a sudden people spawn behind you, grenades fly out of nowhere, people are using nuke tubes and just shooting all around the map, you don't know where you're going to die at, you can get shot through a lot of these soft points as they call it here on the map as well, so you have to be very careful and pretty slow, which is kind of ironic since this is a fast paced multiplayer map, but these multiplayer maps are all fantastic, very phenomenal additions to the already phenomenal remaster of Modern Warfare. Despite what we think about the supply drops and any of the DLC content they released for the weapons, this map pack really lives up to the expectation that everybody had when they announced a remaster of the original Variety DLC. Now, this is a great opportunity for people who didn't get to purchase the Variety map pack back in 2009 and also for people who didn't even play Modern Warfare when it released in 2009 as well. So according to a chart, which I'll be talking about in the next two days or so, this investment chart could possibly be teasing another DLC release or a major map pack for Modern Warfare Remastered in quarter three. Now I'll talk about that in this separate video coming up, but this either is referring to the variety map pack in which the release date on this chart is wrong or it's referring to another major DLC map pack in quarter three. 
And if that's the case, then I think this is a perfect opportunity to release some of the scrapped maps that were in the works back in, I believe, late 2009. So I'll leave a list on screen so you can see, but there were multiplayer maps like Ambush Night, Argon, Cell Block, District Night, Dusk, Facility, even Favela, which saw the light of day in Modern Warfare 2, Forest, Hill, Invasion, Mansion, Overgrown Night, Palace, and even Rooftops, along with Strike Night and Suburbs. So I'm assuming a majority of these maps were either some of the core ideas the developers had, or even some reimagined maps from previous Call of Duty games, and even maps taken directly from the campaign in Modern Warfare as well. So who knows? I think it's a perfect opportunity to release some of those maps. That's if developers over at Raven are aware of these scrapped maps, then they can easily just reinvent them, reimagine them in some way, and release them as a, another standalone map pack for Modern Warfare Remastered. But if Variety is the only DLC we see, or major map pack we see for the game, then I'm fine with that. We all know COD 4 didn't have more than one map pack anyway. And if that's the case, then it's even referring to a potential remaster of Modern Warfare 2 in the near future as well. To end off this video, I just wanted to let you guys know there's not much to cover with this game. As I've said before, I'm mostly going to be streaming Modern Warfare Remastered from this point forward. I'll have gameplay reviews of maybe new maps that come out. And when I say new maps, I mean weekend warfare events in which we have daylight, a reimagining of one of the core multiplayer maps. If we have any new weapons release or any new features that come out, game mode, so on and so forth. I'll cover that in some very well edited videos but other than that i'll be streaming the game taking down some challenges in game earning some camos and having a great time with friends who also enjoy the nostalgic call of duty experience but other than that there's not much else to cover for the game i'll be covering a lot of other games this summer which also includes a potential dlc 5 for black ops 3 if that comes to par the gameplay from modern warfare remastered will of course be used for upcoming videos discussions or any news related to call of duty 2017 thanks for watching everybody really hope you've enjoyed some variety of gameplay in the background this has been dk dynamite and enjoy the rest of the gameplay